Are Manchester United preparing for a second bid for Gerard Braithwaite? Is United willing to wait nine months for Dan Ashraf to become sporting director? If has his say on Eric Turner, why he kept him. And Alvarez appears to be on a short list of Manchester United. Joshua Xerxes update to see whether he will be joining Manchester United. Welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy Ivorian Spice right here to give you the latest news regarding Manchester United. Those who are new to the channel, Better make sure you guys subscribe, smash that like button, share across all social media platforms and become a member. And let's get straight into today's news. Manchester United preparing a second bid for Gerard Braithwaite. Reported by the Daily Mails that Manchester United could be offering up to about £70 million, which again, it's all stations because it might not be true. According to the Daily Mail, stresses that Everton are determined to keep the defender and they are holding firm to the 70 million demanding for the 21 year old. Right for its admission from the England squad for Euros 2024, the club's more times to discuss a range deal. They have thus far refused to meet Everton's astronomical price tag talented player. Everton have financial problems and will want to avoid more points deduction next season, but they understood to be using the 80 million paid for Harry Maguire as a benchmark. United know that Brentford is ready to move after agreeing personal terms with the player at the beginning of the transfer window. Now time is passing by the remains an Everton player. Is Braithwaite willing to put in a transfer request? And there you have it. Coming from Shreddy News, Braithwaite, who I always call Braithwaite because again, I have to say to you Manchester United fans, my Red United TV gang, the Hollicks, my United Hollicks, well, I am not convinced with Gerard Brickwaite. Yes, he's had some, he had a good season with Everton and he's had a decent season as well with PSV the season before. But as well, what we're looking for in terms of price tag, we can get less for that. We of Manchester United have been linked with in the cell from Sporting Lisbon, of course, Todibo, which I've I've made it a difficult transfer to do to complete because of the Nice situation and of course they're not allowing us to buy from Nice so we just don't know what's going to happen with Tadebo but of, of course other other defenders have been mentioned Break Rate is a player that has been liked by Manchester United in the headquarters and the recruitment team of course Manchester United want to bring a core of British players and strength for the team signing young players as well and also young upcoming coming talents around the world. It's a part of Manchester United's new summer plan. But Braithwaite, is it a player that is worth breaking the bank? £70 million for this English player. Just another Harry Maguire, in my opinion. I might be wrong, but I will support him if he joins this club. But for Everton to hold up to £80 million using the Harry Maguire benchmark towards Manchester United, saying, you know what? You paid £80 million for Harry Maguire and he ain't that great. Oh, we're going to scam you and add the United tax as always, the English tax as well, and value him at £70 million. Pounds. But then, Everton, you're playing the hardball game because you know you have until the end of the month to meet financial fair playing demands. Otherwise, you will be getting the points deduction. If they want to avoid that point deduction, I think they probably have to, at times, maybe submit to Manchester United because personal terms have already been agreed. In my opinion, guys, I would go for someone else. But Manchester United are heavily focused on Gerard Breakway. Being 6'4", dominating the air, I think that's going to play a part. Rapidly quick as well and reads the game well. And he's, he's in, in the top five percentiles in defenders in, in, in England, you know, in terms of tackles won, uh, interceptions, break breaking a play and etc. He's been up there. Breakway, just because I said I don't rate him, doesn't mean that he's not a good player. He is. He is a good player. It's just that it doesn't give him the ooh la la feeling, the je ne sais quoi, you know. You know what I mean? You know, when I'm telling you I, I need some seasoning to make this chicken and I, you, I'm expecting you to bring me the paprika, the the, the 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 chicken seasoning, salt, pepper, you know, if you want jerk seasoning, whatever, you know, peri-peri seasoning, whatever it is that I've asked you for, but you end up bringing me salt instead of bringing me seasoning. That's how I feel. It's just lukewarm to me. There are... Break rate is lukewarm, you know. I, I like the Tadebo, you know. Oof, the spices, you know. Bring me the seasoning for the chicken. The Tadebos and etc. you know. Not the break rates. I don't know. I just don't like playing salt. Moving on from that, Manchester United are willing to wait another nine months to bring in Dan Ashworth, who's currently on garden leave at Newcastle, um, to start work as a new sporting director. This must be the most craziest thing because... I know Manchester United need to fix upstairs. And upstairs, the back office is heavily needed attention. We need to wait nine months when there's Paul Mitchell down there, sitting there free. Doesn't have a job. 
who you can bring in as a sporting director. Dan Ashworth recommended Gary Scrubgate, Southgate. That's his recommendation. And, and you know, watching England play, Gary Scrubgate, Southgate has, oh, Gary Solskjaer, as I would like to call him as well, hasn't really, really, really set the world on light in the Euros. And then you're thinking, that guy is who you wanted to champion to replace Eric Ten Hag? You make me sick. Disgusting. I've had enough of this. What kind of nonsense is this? Imagine, guys, Manchester United is my ready night gang, Gareth Scrubgate, and Manchester United are willing to wait nine months for Dan Ashworth as well. Which is, is it worth it to hold us back? What all would it hold us back from doing what we need to do in terms of this summer? To me, it looks like it's better for us to move on, just like the way Manchester United were willing to prepare to move on from Joe Breakweight, um, especially from Everton, astronomical, ridiculous value of the player. So in, for Manchester United themselves as well, to wait nine months for a sporting director to get these key players in, you know, strategically planned for the club, the transfers and the way you want to play football and etc. It's too much of a wait. It's time to move on. Ratcliffe, Ineos, move on. Then we have Ratcliffe, who speaks on why he kept Eric Ten Hag in one of his um, interviews this is coming from MUFCCMPD. Make sure you guys follow them on X. Let's hear what Sergeant Ratcliffe had to say about the reason why he kept Eric Ten Hag. Why did, mm. why did you keep Ten Hag? Eric? Mm. Uh, because he's a good coach. Yeah. yeah he's a good coach. Um, you know, he was very good at Ajax. And he was actually well, I suppose what I'm well, getting at so. is, 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 does the success of Manchester United come down to the choice of the coach? That's, I think, that, that's, you know, the... The man in the street likes to think that the coach is everything. And uh, so, you know, everything, you know, the world revolves around the coach. And maybe it did in the days of Alex Ferguson, because Alex Ferguson was more of a general manager than just a coach. He was a lot more than that. But in, if you look at, you know, if you look at the, that 11 seasons in Manchester United, we've had a whole series of coaches, and some of them are very good ones. You know, we've probably had seven coaches, and none of them have succeeded at all. Uh, so you, you can't describe the the root of the problem to the coach, can it? It's the environment in which they're working. And there you have it there, guys, for those who are watching. Joe Jim Ratcliffe's talking about the environment of, the, of of where the coaches reside. It's not entirely everything on the coach. Why he kept Eric Turner. He's a good coach, he says, you know. You know, you know the last couple of years since that uh, has retired, is, you know, there's been a lot of coaches. And we've been, we've had a lot of good coaches Sturgeon Radcliffe is. But again, we can't just blame everything entirely on the club not being successful on the coach. Sturgeon Radcliffe has said. He also talked about the environment as well. The environment not being good enough, stable enough for, for Manchester United coaches to do well, you know, to thrive upon. Even the players as well to thrive upon. So again, whether you guys are convinced, because as well, I, I felt like he was stumbling a bit. I feel like it was like, um, <laughs> the reason why I kept everything I've gone, um, 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 he's a good coach. Um, yeah, yeah, he wants a trophy. Um, 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 we have our stability. Because uh, um, I just felt like he was lying a little bit there, guys. Jer Sir Jim Rackliff, I don't think he was completely telling the truth. But at the same time, if that's what he's going to stick with, hey, you best back him in the summer. Especially in the start of the win, um, the start of the season, and and especially if you start losing, I hope you can stick up and back him. I hope you can. And as well, we've heard that in the story, are not happy with Eric Ten Hag's um, interview with the Dutch um, as a Dutch punditry covering the Euros, or how he spoke about how they came to his, his place in Ibiza and disturbed his holiday and begged him and said that you're the guy, you know, in yourself. But hey, you know what? You you spoke to other managers. Expect a little bit of a clap back from Eric Ten Hag. Edison Alvarez, who happens to be on Manchester United's shortlist as well. This is coming from various news articles. Edison Alvarez could be a long-term replacement for Casemiro, who currently is valued by West Ham around 50 to 67 million pounds. Whether Manchester United can strike a deal, we shall see. However, Edison Alvarez has also been injured in the Copa America recently playing for Mexico against Jamaica. So that could stumble or hope Manchester United's plans. It, it, it's just a player that happens to be on the shortlist. Doesn't mean that he will be signed. Joshua Xerxes, the striker, the young striker from Bologna, who happened to be on Manchester United's radar. Could this player become a striker for Manchester United? The player himself is waiting until after the Euros 2024 to make a decision. 
uh, about his future. AC Milan has made himself uninterested now. They've put themselves away. But again, it, we just don't know regarding his player's future. But Manchester United are in pole position, as sources say. Let's see. Anyway, that is, this has been your latest Manchester United news. You guys let me know what your thoughts on the whole situation regarding Gerard Breakfake. Should Manchester United go and make a second bid? And if they do make a second bid, what do you think Manchester United should go for? A 60 million? Because I think 70 million is too much. To me, 55 million is the maximum that Manchester United should go for. In regards to Dan Ashworth, go and get Paul Mitchell. Don't wait nine months. Wait nine months for this scrub. The guy values Gareth Scrubgate. Are you not listening to that? Are you not awake? Seriously, Scrubgate. That is so sure. The guy has zero tactics. He's got nothing. We've waited nine years. We still haven't seen tactics from, from England. And you complain about Eric Tenog, two seasons, no tactics, no nothing, no philosophy, but there's true trophy. What do you guys think of Ratcliffe's opinion on Eric Tenog? Do you even believe him? Do you do you believe that he thinks Eric Tenog is a good coach because he was willing to sack him? Edison Alvarez as well. What's your thoughts on that? And Joshua Zerksey, will he sign for Manchester United? As always, guys, subscribe to Red United TV, smash that like button and share across all social media platforms. It's your boy, Avril and Spice. We'll see you for the next video and we'll see you on Tuesday for the England versus Slovenia's watch along at 7.45pm UK time. Peace!